well y'all welcome back to the channel and if you watched my last video where we were trying to sneak in a tomato plant for the rain well we're back out at it today and we're going to try to put another one in yep we sure are and this one's going to be a special one and we're going to show you just everything we're going to do to it because have you ever wondered if you actually plant a tomato with everything people said you should put in the hole with your tomatoes i've often wondered that now many of the things we'll be using today i've stuck in the hole before you know sometimes two or three sometimes one or two you know whatever but i've never really stuck them all in the same hole and see what happens so today we're going to do that and as you know if you watch the previous video you'll know we planned one as a control because we engineers we're just not going to do something and then judge it against nothing we're going to have a control planting and that's what we did yesterday we planned a tomato with just a minimum amendments okay and if you watch it you'll remember we planned that with uh, uh, nothing more than uh, a good organic fertilizer I think it was a pie 4 4 from expert gardening Walmart and some earthworm castings and a little bit of fish to water it down you know fish mulch but today we gonna pull out the full monte me and spooky in between rain showers again so let me show you all what we got because it's sort of like a recipe right so come on so the first thing we've done as you can see is we've dug a deep deep hole yep we have see there now that's pretty darn deep and something i'd like to point out even though this is a raised bed it's about a foot deep you're gonna notice down in there you're gonna see all these roots yep and uh that's just a fact of life i got oak trees a huge mother oak in the front yard and a pop oak in the back been here some say over 200 years and i got a lot of smaller ones if you don't think the uh, trees won't put roots up into your luscious fertile raised beds you'd be wrong and you can see how humid it is because you can probably see the glass on that meter's fogged up but if you can't see we're actually at the top of the 7 ph which is the top of the ph you want to be for vegetables remember and the range most people talk about is from 6.0 to 7.0 medium being you know that sweet spot 6.5 so like I said yesterday, we're going to have to amend this soil at some point in time with a soil acidifier to bring that pH down a touch. And we won't do it today planting, but we'll be doing it here in the very near future. Trust me that. And I'll show you what we use. Now, yesterday, we stuck this tomato in. Yep. The ones that we treated with hydrogen peroxide to shut down that spatoria leaf spot. And it's made it through the afternoon, through several rain and thunderstorms. And she's starting the Cadillac. You can see her right here. Now beside it, you're going to see the other one we're going to be putting in today. Much taller, but it's not in the hole either. That one we also treated with that hydrogen peroxide, and it's still Cadillac and two. And these are both better boy bush tomato plants. So this is going to be our control. We planted it with the organic all-purpose plant food, five four four from expert gardening and we also used earthworm castings you know you can see right there 
1.25 uh, nitrogen. But something I want to show you right here. We're going to be talking about each one of these ingredients as we do it. You're going to see here total nitrogen 1.2 percent water insoluble nitrogen with a little asterisk there and it says right over here why that's something you gotta realize when you're using organics this product contains 1.25 percent slow release nitrogen from earthworm castings yeah it ain't gonna be quick so over the growing season at some point in time it's gonna kick in but it's going to take, not days, but weeks. And that's why when you're using organic sources for nitrogen, say your plants are yellowing, looking a little stunted, and as robust as you'd like, that's one of the reasons. Anything organic will take time to break down. Now, these earthworm castings also have 1% calcium. You know, people like calcium. Because they believe it actually helps the blossom end rot. We'll talk about that a little more later. So those are the two things we used on our control right here. Using the analytical engineering method. So we can judge this one against what's going to be this one that we're putting in today. Yep, and we did use fish too. So, what have we all got here today? We got a whole parcel of things. You're going to see them right here. What we got here, something many of y'all said in the comments. We got Epsom salts. Magnesium sulfate. That's going to add magnesium to the soil. But here's the kicker. Do you even know? If you need magnesium, have you done a soil test? Because magnesium is a soil micronutrient. Yep. And do you know, depending on the region you live in, most soils contain enough magnesium. Now I know that's going to pee off a lot of people because they really believe in it. And that's good. If you believe in it, chunk it in the hole. But here's a caveat. Magnesium sulfate is also a salt and continued use can build up salts in your soil and that's not a good thing. Look it up. And then, of course, we're going to be using the Expert Gardener Organics All-Purpose Plant Food 544. We're going to be using earthworm castings again. And excuse my... Uh, Organic Choice Miracle Grow Bone Meal Bag here. It looks like it's been through a war. Because it has, and that is a 690. So that's got 6% nitrogen, 9% phosphorus, 0% potassium. Okay? Now, the reason why it's all ate up. This is a kitty crew for whatever reason and squirrels love this stuff i don't know why so I'm, when i saw it i had to put it up but it's a little bit too late so you're going to look here on the back and it says total nitrogen six percent water soluble nitrogen here again insoluble means it's not readily available to the plant yep it's back to that taking time to break down. Now available phosphates, 8%. And that's derived from the bone meal. And like it says down here, this product contains 6% slowly available nitrogen. Okay? Start reading the backs of your bags, folks, and you'll get an understanding why? I'm not saying organics aren't good, but they're never fast acting. And that's why you'll see on a lot of organic products now, they'll say time release or slow release. Well, they've always been that way. 
since the beginning they just highlight it now because it's a great marketing thing now we got the expert organics here now we got the expert organics fertilizer the 544 and you can see here 5% total nitrogen and it's got 1.5% ammonia nitrogen but only point two tenths of a percent other water soluble nitrogen so what does it have available immediately once you put it in the hole for your tomatoes or sprinkle it around the drip edge when you're using it that'd be 1.7 percent nitrogen that's available immediately the other 3.30 percent is water and soluble nitrogen here again that takes time for bacteria that their mycelium fungi to break it down and make it available to your plant available phosphate four percent soluble potash is four percent that's potassium now you need that phosphate and the potash to increase your fruit set. It helps the plant make more blossoms and develop the root structure. Yep, sure does. But in this organic fertilizer, it's also got 8% calcium. And 1% of it is magnesium. And 0.2% is water soluble magnesium ready to go right now as well as 1.4 percent sulfur which will either maintain or lower your soil ph okay so there's some of the ingredients of course right over there we got some alaska fish fertilizer but now, let's see right there is what? Three, four, five ingredients? Oh, there's the compost. That's the sixth. Now, something else we're going to be looking at. As you can see right there, we got a bag, a Ziploc with a banana peel in it. Yep. There are people that swear by it. And here's the thought. See, bananas are high in potassium. We all know that. That's why we old people eat them. But here again, it takes time for this banana peel to break down in the hole. Oh, yeah. Here again, it takes soil bacteria and fungi to start doing their work. But we're gonna throw it in too. And then we got a Ziploc full of baking soda right here. And you might wonder what we're gonna do with it. Well, it is said that you can put baking soda not only in the hole, but sprinkle it around your plant and it'll make your tomatoes sweeter. Well, here's the thing. We all know baking soda will uh, neutralize acid. So what's the thought here? The thought is here, the baking soda will neutralize the acidity in the soil and in the tomato itself. Now I know many people believe this, but it is just a garden myth. Because tomato acidity actually comes primarily from the variety of the tomato you plant. Yes, it does. Some tomatoes are bred to be sweeter. Others, more acidic. Especially your canning varieties. There's a reason for that. High acidity, less bacterial growth. Plus, your older standard varieties from, you know, back in my childhood and that, were more acidic than the hybrids they breed today. 
because it seems like everything out of the garden now, people, they want to be sweet. Where I, I prefer an acidic tomato. But for the fact of this, we're going to throw it in too. And then as some of you said in comments from the last video, you said you always add eggshells. And you know, oh, this one's common. Almost everybody brings this one up, whether you're planting or whether you're having a problem with garden in your garden with uh, blossom end rot. You see, the theory here is blossom end rot comes from a lack of calcium, which it can. But in most areas, calcium is adequate in your soil. This gets back to that soil test to know if you have or haven't. The main culprit, blossom end rot, whether it be tomatoes or what have you, has more to do with infrequent watering than it has to do with a calcium deficiency. Okay? But we're, hey, it ain't gonna hurt. And we're gonna throw in the eggshells too. Now here again, even though I pounded these up best I could, I wasn't gonna dirty up the blender or my coffee grinder. They will take time to break down. It's not gonna be immediate. And if you're having blossom end rot and you throw some uh, eggshells around, magically the blossom end rot stops, oh, something else happened, most likely. You're watering on a more regular basis, I'm just saying. Maybe you're not. But that's going in the hole too. Then, another one that you often hear is aspirin. Yep, we got that here too. Now what is aspirin supposed to do? Well, aspirin is supposed to strengthen your tomato's immunity system. Yep, that's the thought. Now, there's no scientific evidence to prove that to be a fact. Nope. And then think about it. Does it improve your immunity system? In my research, and as far as I can find, aspirin doesn't have that trait. But here again, it doesn't matter. It ain't going to hurt nothing. We're going to throw that in there too. Who knows? And then we got another tried and true ingredient people bring up. And that's used coffee grounds. Yep, they're right here. And that. Now, I normally throw these in my compost pile. Well, I normally throw banana peels and all my food scraps in there too, as you all have seen in my Lazy Man composting videos, as well as the worm box videos. Throw it all in there. Let the worms do the work. But here, coffee grounds, what are they good for? Well, the number one thing they're good for is nitrogen. Yep. Now, a lot of people believe that coffee grounds are acidic and will lower your soil pH. Well, unbrewed coffee, beans, or grounds are acidic. But during the brewing process, uh, that acidity comes out in the coffee you brew and you drink. Therefore, what remains is no longer acidic. Here again, look it up. You know, at universities. You know, reputable places. Okay? But, hey, we can use a good nitrogen source. Now, here again, it's going to take time for these to be converted. And last but not least, you'll see this tin here. Now, many have also said, and I've also read over the years, put fish in the hole. Of course, we all know fish high in nitrogen, calcium, and other trace minerals. Well, I slap out of fish heads today, but you know what? I got a can of sardines, and it can't hurt. But it gets back to it will take time.
for all this to break down. Pretty much everything you see here, with the exclusion of the Epsom salts, the fish emulsion, the baking soda, and the aspirin, will take some period of time to break down and provide nutrients to my tomato plant. And I've always wanted to do this experiment. So this year, since I ain't doing much, why not do it this year? So we got the control right here. And we ain't gonna be adding none of this to our control. It's all going, it's all going to this one. So you're gonna see over the remaining of the garden season just what it can do or not do okay so let's get to sticking it in the ground and dropping some stuff in the hole okay spooky you over here help me out some come on okay spook we got the hole wall deep uh Oh, Spooky, you going to check out these uh, ingredients? Make sure you agree with them? Hmm. Y'all right here? Okay. Time to get with it. So, the first thing I'm going to do is put me in some of this banana peel. You know, for that there uh, potassium. So we're going to get it out. We're going to tear us off a couple pieces. I don't think we need it all. But we ain't going to stop there. We're going to help out the worms. What, Spook? You don't think I'm doing it right? Get out of the way of the camera. Okay? Yeah, I'm putting the banana peels in now. It'll be okay. Come on. You can come over here and watch Papa. But what we're going to do, we're just going to chop it up some. And of course, you might see Spooky. He's got a supervisor. Pardon him. He's part of the family. So we're just going to chop it on up. With Spooky checking it out. You know, <laughs> shade in the hole. <laughs> because, you know, the theory here is the smaller bits. What do you think, Spook? You don't like banana peel? Okay. So we got the banana peel in there, even with Spooky's help. <laughs> Come here, little buddy. So next up to bat. We're going to put in the coffee grounds. This is a one and a half tablespoon. One of them little miracle Grow things. We're going to pop in one of them. It's one and a half. There's three. Four and a half. Right there. And we're going to say good enough. Next, the eggshells, you know, for that calcium. So we got our potassium in there from the banana peels. Now this is two eggshells roasted in the oven and crushed. So we got our nitrogen in, you know, from those coffee grounds. And that, potassium from the banana peels. And now we got the calcium in there from them eggshells. Now next, and we is our uh, baking soda. Now in the bottom of the hole, we're going to put. Now in the bottom of the hole, we're going to put 
one half tablespoons. See, I don't think it matters. And we're going to save the rest, sprinkle around the top here. So remind me of that, okay? And now we got to put the aspirin in. So our tomato will grow a healthy immune system. Or so they say. So we got six aspirin there. And we're just going to dump them in too. There we go. Now the nasty part. And we ain't going to put all these in there. These are sardines. You can clearly see. You can clearly see these are sardines. And we're going to drop some of them in there. Two of them. Okay. Save the other two. Okay. You could have put the whole thing in there. We don't want to overload it. And we're putting it deep down. So the kitty crew and other critters don't tend to want to dig it up. Next up to bat is our Epsom salts, our magnesium sulfate. Now it is recommended here even on the bag that we put two tablespoons. That's one and a half. That's one and a half more. I don't think a little bit extra will hurt, do you? And like I'm saying, that'll add magnesium if indeed we actually needed it. Now, I haven't done a soil test on this particular uh, garden bed in oh, a couple of years. Now next up is the bone meal. Like again, I got to apologize for the bag and that's a 6% nitrogen and a 9% phosphorus, you know, for all them blossoms that we want. So we want this, we want this tomato on steroids, pumping out the fruit. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in all about three, four and a half tablespoons of that. I mean, you know, we already got a lot of nitrogen going on in there, don't we? So these, this, this thing should grow like a weed. Next up, some worm castings. Now another thing worm castings do is we're going to put in about four of these scoops. Is that also? that they also help with your uh, soil tilth. We don't just add nitrogen. And plus, what I found, they bring that there soil bacteria, that mycelium fungi, and earthworms back to the hole. And we, we want all that going on. That's just been my experience. And then we got this here, Expert Gardener Organics, all-purpose plant food, 544. And we're going to toss in one, two of those miracle Grow scoops, which will actually be three tablespoons, in case you care. I, I, you, you can't go wrong. This, this stuff will not burn your plant. Remember? slow release the only thing left and you might wonder why I put it in the bottom of the hole because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my homemade compost to the bottom of that hole right here you can see it you know that 
you can see it. It was made with all kinds of things. And then what we're going to do, we're going to chop, you know, break everything up really good with the old, uh, you know, with the old uh, trowel here. And that, so as soon as those tomato plant roots start to peek their head out of that pot, whoo, they're going to be feasting on all that goodness in the hole. Or so is the thought. But like I've been trying to stress, yep, at some point in time this year, they will be. Here in the next few weeks, to the first month or more, they ain't gonna be getting much. So everything's in the hole. Let me bring you over and show it to you. Now I know it's sort of shadowy in there, hard to see. Well, you can see, it's all mixed well, okay? So the next thing we gotta do is take this here big leggy plant right here and stick it in this deep hole. And it was deep. As y'all saw. Of course, we're going to leave some of these bare stems out. Because that's another thing everybody says do. Trim off all your lower leaves so that soil bacteria and fungi can't jump on it. Well, I did a video on that too. Why? Pretty much ain't going to help you. Especially not here in the deep south. We're going to take that pot off. And... Once again, our roots are starting to get all wrapped up on the bottom. We don't want that. And you might have to sacrifice a few. Try not to sacrifice many. And I always break up the outside too a little. You know, you smoosh it. Now as far as I'm concerned, it's ready to go in the hole. And we're just going to stick it down there. And we're going to give it a good press. And then we're going to take some of our fine garden soil. Now, I'm sorry. If y'all want me to use some of that expensive Pro Mix or uh, miracle Grow or what have you in here, that ain't just Mr. Tom's way. And if you think about it, and I have. I thought about how my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my daddy planted. They didn't have all these fancy store-bought soil. No, they surely didn't. We'll just keep backfilling this. They had their own. Now, yeah. They put their cow manures, their chicken manures, the rabbit manures in the gardens. Rabbit manure can go straight on. It won't burn your plants. Chicken manure and cow manure should be composted, by the way. That's how they build up their soil. And they also, you know, what they didn't feed the chickens, figs, and cattle, you know, as far as food scraps and waste, they threw in their compost piles. They didn't pay for uh, support. Major corporations worldwide. And I'll tell you what, I wish I had pictures, which probably do packed up somewhere, of the gardens and the bounty they came up with. Now, if you'd like to see that bounty, even today, there's a way to see it, even right here on YouTube. You can go on over and watch some of the YouTube videos on the Amish ways of gardening up in the Amish areas in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and such states. The Mennonites. Oh yeah. They all still, now you gotta be careful. Some don't, some done got modern on us. But others are still doing it. The same old way. They have huge families and they don't starve and die. Well, there you have it. Tomato plant, too. 
in the hole. With everything ever suggested, many things I've used in the past, and everything I could find during my research stuck in the hole too. Let me wash it up, and I'll come right on back and we'll chat a little while longer. Now as you can see, the second one's in the hole. And this one right here is one with everything in the hole. But the kitchen sink and I only got one. I couldn't drag it out of the kitchen. And this one over here that we planted yesterday is our control specimen with just organic fertilizer and worm casting. And we're not going to cheat either. Now it may get some more organic fertilizer and worm casting and fish. Yep, got fish too during the season. But it ain't going to get nothing else. This one over here, likewise. It will only get additions to what I used when I was planting. No synthetic fertilizers, either in granular or water-soluble fertilizers. It'll get fish. It'll get some more organic fertilizer, I'm sure. That'll be pretty much about it, because that's got everything else in the hole. We may add some more baking soda to the top and that you know to make those tomatoes more sweeter yeah so there you have it the great tomato experiment is on here july 21st 2021 and now you'll see as i see so stay tuned now I'm going to water them both in tonight or I call it an evening with some more fish. I love fish. It's good stuff. Fish done got pricey though. Well, let's do a wrap on the front porch. Now, in case you just spied it out of the corner of your eye, uh, we purchased two more Heat Master tomatoes. Yep, we got to get in a little bit later. Woohoo! Sun finally come out. No wonder Spooky gave up on me. There's Speedy. Spooky, you had to find some shade? I thought you were my lifelong gardening pal. Oh, you checked everything out, and you saw that Papa had it covered. Well, I appreciate your confidence. You were right there for most of it, weren't you? You gonna come up on the porch with Papa, or you gonna stay in the shadows? I don't blame you if you do. That grass is still wet, and it's cool under the big old oak. But, you know, if you want to come and lay with Papa, you're more than welcome, okay? Well, we had that rain shower. Now the sun's out. Maybe it'll be out for the rest of the day, tomorrow morning, and I'll be able to mow some of the yard, hopefully, but I'm still not complaining. So y'all, I'd actually put together a list of everything I was gonna put in after doing extensive research. Not only on Mr. Google and DuckDuckGo, but I've been writing down your comments over the last three years, what you all recommended. And as you can see on this list, we had the compost, yep. We had the aspirin to boost that immunity, yep. We had the Epsom salts for the magnesium, eggshells, or whole eggs, you could have put them in there. For added calcium. We had fish heads. Primarily, you know, we had sardines. Primarily for nitrogen. But they will have a little bit of phosphorus and potash, or potassium as it's called now. We dropped in the baking soda there to make them sweeter. We just have to see. I think that's all about mind over matter. 
you do something you just want it to be so in your mind once you do something even if they're not sweeter you believe they are hence why we're doing what's called a controlled study we have our control and we have the full monte tomato plant right here we threw in the worm castings for nitrogen banana peels for more potassium five five or five four four organic fertilizer good stuff also slow release even though it don't say it on the package it is trust me and the coffee grounds for more nitrogen and the myth is it'll raise soil ph or lower soil ph excuse me but it won't trust me that as always do your own research and as always does any of this hurt to stick it in your planting hole in my opinion no it don't also in spooky's opinion it doesn't hurt a bit you saw he checked everything out he okayed every ingredient and then he went on and started napping under the shade of the oak and as you can see he's napping at my feet speedy on the other hand you might not be able to see her she's right there underneath her favorite holly bushes curled up uh, grooming at the moment she, she'll sneak closer as we see it so y'all there you have it and down in the comments you can say which one you will think will do better is it one with everything that people recommend and I could research in the hole or is it going to be the one with the minimalistic amendments which like I said we're going to continue throughout the growing season we're not going to deviate so we have a true control study and in the end you know we'll look at plant bigger disease resistance and tomato production yeah it's going to take a lot of work when you do this but I want to know my analytical mind and the engineer in me wants to know for sure is it all worth it or does it really don't matter don't hurt but don't make much difference so I the kitty crew Gracie and all of y'all will see it unfold this year as the garden season continues in the deep south so let me know which one you're betting on also let me know if you think I left something out of the hole we can always do a top dressing can't we yes we can and once I put y'all up I gotta sneak in those two heat masters they're just gonna go in like I normally do some of my world famous compost organic fertilizer worm castings watered in with some of that there fish motion and we're gonna call it a day because even though the rain has stopped here it's still the humidity is right at 100 percent starting to heat up i think it's now at 85 it's around whoo, 4 4 30 in the evening got a light breeze but i will tell you you can tell it's human because you don't got to do much before you get sweaty yeah as you can tell by spooky and speedy conked out not too far away but i'm gonna get on in here to the air conditioner check on gracie now as i done said all this the sun is starting to fade underneath some more clouds and you're gonna hear the wind picking up and it does look like out to the southwest we got another storm coming I got done just in time. So wherever y'all are, I'm hoping you get what you need. Rainfall and otherwise. Your gardens are doing well. You are safe, well, and happy. With your family, friends, and loved ones. Furry friends and all. Till we see you on the next video. Goodbye for now. Yep, getting breezy again. Spook.
it's another cold front temperature just dropped like five degrees all of a sudden that's okay we got the maters in we're good to go now lower play the rain it'll save me from watering tonight i was going to water them a little bit of fish before i went in but i can catch that in the morning spooky i'm heading in okay remember gets rough get in the barn it gets rougher go in the under porch bunker i don't think i gotta tell you that twice do i okay i'm sure you're enjoying this cool breeze now i am hey i think i'm gonna get some iced tea and come back and sit with you until it rains what do you think i'm thinking he likes that too later off